welcome back dear children every day we are doing some experimentations here to keep you safe at home and to make learning more interesting let's move on to our second part of matchbox by asha punna devi whenever ajit sees a new letter from nomita's mother he smiles derisively and says why bother to read that i'll go and fill out a money order form in here nomita's mother has lots of expectations about her son-in-law but her son-in-law was not that much large hearted whenever he sees a letter from nomita's mother he makes a contemptuous smile and says why bother to read that i'll go and fill out the money order form Nomita's head hangs low with the shame and the insult of it. So some time ago, out of anger and grief, Nomita forbade her mother from writing to her on postcards. She thought that from then on she would try to send her a little money, whatever she could pull together in secret. So this was what came of letters in envelopes too. Suddenly, Nomita flames into anger at her mother. Why? Why does she keep on begging like this? Why won't she let Nomita keep her self-respect, her dignity? No, this time she will write and tell her mother clearly, I can't do any more. Don't hope for anything from me. Usually, these remarks from her husband debased her individuality. Out of anger, she forbade her mother to not to write in postcards so that she could pull a little money from his pocket and could send it to her mother that's why the letters came in envelopes this time too she was insulted and she flames into anger at her mother why why does she keep on begging like this why won't she think that i have dignity and self respect out of her anger and insult She decided to tell her mother that she can't do anything more and don't hope anything from her. It is not because that she hates her mother but because she wants to keep her dignity. Right then Ajit steps into the room after finishing his leisurely Sunday bath. Nomita's sharp indignation at the insult simmering all this while seems to want to dash itself violently against him. Nomita roars out, when did this letter arrive? Ajit glances at her obliquely, estimating the magnitude of his error. So, at this time, Ajit came to the room after having a leisurely Sunday bath. So, this time, Nomita's sharp hatred, simmering, boiling all this while, she just want to give him a violent hit, but she couldn't. simply because she is a woman so she shouted at him when did this letter arrive another handful of cash for this he had thought and decided not to give the letter to nomita he was going to tear it up and throw it away he has made a big mistake not that ajit is going to feel abashed about that okay ajit looked at her indirectly in a way calculating the magnitude of his error the moment he saw the letter he thought another handful of money for this an expression which certifies his extreme contempt towards his mother in law he has made a big mistake here and he is not at all ashamed of that as to trying hard to remember he says letter what letter Oh ho yes yes indeed there was a letter from your mother i just hadn't got around to giving it to you now we are going to witness a fierce fight between nomita and ajit why hadn't you got around to it why why answer me why hadn't you got around to it what a nonsense ajit says i had forgotten why else liar nomita hisses like a snake Why are you saying whatever comes to your mouth don't people forget now out of her extreme anger nomita calls ajit a liar no they don't 
why did you open my letter this charge as it tries to scatter to the winds what if i opened it my own wife's letter be quiet be quiet i tell you for what reason should you open my letters haven't i told you a thousand times not to okay here he didn't take all her charges seriously and he simply says that he has the right to read his wife's letters ajit doesn't fear nomita's anger he fears a row so he smiles an affected smile and says if you're forbidding it then it's a definite something shouldn't i make sure that no one is passing you love letters in secret stop it what a common vulgar man you are after this it's not possible for ajit to smile his fake smile any longer so here ajit doesn't fear her anger but he fears a quarrel here so he put an affected smile on his face and says if you are forbidding me to read your letters then there is something in it so shouldn't i make sure that no one is giving you love letters in secret so it's the right of a husband so nomita shouted at him and called him what a common vulgar man you are now he too picks up the poison knife he says is that so those who wine day and night and hold out their palms to their son in law they are the high class people a dung picker's daughter becomes a queen and so shut up nomita yells their room is on the third floor that's a blessing otherwise with that scream everyone would have come to look shut up ajit rows out what shut up i'll do what i want what i please what will you do can you do anything his fake smile couldn't pacify nomita so he took the poison knife here it means his sharp insult towards nomita those people who are begging in front of their son in laws they are called the high class people and he insulted her by calling her as a dung picker's daughter here we see the helplessness of women to suffer every sharp indignation from their husbands i can't i can't do anything almost panting nomita pronounces each word clearly you want to see if i can do anything and immediately she does something that is astonishing she grabs ajit's matchbox that is lying near his cigarettes on the table and she lights a matchstick and touches it to her sari instantly it flares up the very fine angel of a wealthy wife sari when ajit challenged nomita she took it seriously and did something astonishing she grabbed ajit's matchbox and lighted a matchstick suddenly the flames went high the very next instant ajit have you gone mad he says and jumps to her side and grabs the burning patch and slaps it between his hands and puts out the fire and to tell the truth now he is a little afraid he looks fearfully at nomita's face sees a fire burning there bright blazing red he never expected this from nomita she was a soft and silent girl how could she do this the very next moment he extinguished the fire from her sari by slapping it between his hands but he saw a fire burning bright on her face he couldn't put out that fire on her face he doesn't have the courage to put out that fire by slapping it between his hands so he tries to pour water on it with great difficulty he attempts to speak normally you lose all common sense when you get angry don't you a woman and such anger oof who knows what nomita would have said next but right then her knees rini steps into the room so he began to appease her and spoke normally to her a woman and such anger oof he didn't expect such anger from a woman like nomita right then her knees rini 
stepped into the room immediately she says piercingly so kurima how much longer does the washerman have to wait if you don't want to give him any of your clothes at least tell him that for a second or two nomita is still perhaps recalling the washerman's face waiting for her downstairs then she picks up the dirty clothes and starts sorting them she says in a calm tone go tell him i'm coming i'm bringing the clothes so her niece rini reminded nomita that the washerman is waiting downstairs suddenly she changed herself to a meek and obedient girl and began to sort the dirty clothes once again nomita speaks her mind so no one attacks her outright to her face they only pinch her with the sharp words her second sister in law is almost exhausted with work this morning and seeing her she puts a twisted smile on her sweat streaked face and says well that's something at least you finally decided to come down from upstairs baba there is no good or bad time for you you find the smallest excuse to go into your room and get cozy with your husband does the love talk never get old okay now we see that atmosphere of a joint family here since she is so silent no one attacks her directly but always use the sharp words at her there was a twisted smile on her second sister in law when she saw namita and she says baba you are so lucky to have a wife like namita she finds the smallest excuse to go upstairs and sit with you namita looks around once to get a sense of the atmosphere sees the hurly burly of the morning sees the forest of people on either side her voice must not tremble so she too smiles a small smile and says in an extremely soft voice oh it's nothing like that you should come and peek in some time our talk is all angry talk do you know so she looked around and saw the hurly burly of the morning her voice should not tremble so she smiled at everyone and said in an extremely soft voice oh it's nothing like that you should come and peek we had an angry talk there major wife laughs ho ho and says stop it no wife don't cover up the forbidden fish with your pious pinash we haven't been raised on donkey grass why do we need to peek in what you are showing us right in front of our eyes 24 hours a day nomida laughs a laugh that can bring an attractive flush to a white face after laughing that laugh she says go on you say the naughtiest things stop it nomida please don't try to hide things from us we are not that much foolish to believe this we don't want to peek in it is enough what you are showing right in front of us so she simply smiled an attractive smile and continued if you want to believe in such a way okay then go on i don't have any problem the busy boro wife runs up have you chopped the vegetables yet or are you just telling stories and suddenly she stops and starts what's that what's this unlucky thing no wife how did you burn your angel that way nomita too starts but only for a moment the next instant she folds the angel back quickly and says laughing oh don't remind me it's exactly what you keep warning me about i didn't listen and see what happened i used my angel to lift a hot pot of water off the stove and that did it the busy boro wife runs there and question them what are you doing here simply talking haven't you chopped the vegetables suddenly she saw the burned sari of nomita and she question how did you burn your sari nomita suddenly folded her sari back and cooked up the story oh it's nothing serious it happened while i lifted a hot pot of water from the stove nomita pulls the basket of potatoes towards herself and sits down to peel potatoes and in her mind she keeps thinking about how she might be able secretly to send her mother a few rupees she can't really write to her i can't do any more don't hope 
for anything from me. Over there, the entire village knows Nomita is a queen. Nomita's husband is high-minded, large-hearted. Okay, as nothing happened, she pulled the basket of potatoes and began to peel it. But in her mind, she is thinking about her mother. Even though she felt angry towards her mother, she couldn't leave her in her misfortune. Everyone in her village believes that she is a queen and her husband is generous, big-hearted, high-minded, etc., etc. This, this is precisely why I compare women to matchboxes. Even when they have the materials within themselves to set off many raging fires, they never flare up and burn away the mask of men's high-mindedness, their large-heartedness. They don't burn away their own colorful shells. They won't burn them. The men know this too. That is why they leave them scattered so carelessly in the kitchen, in the pantry, in the bedroom, here, there, anywhere. Quite without fear, they put them in their pockets. Her sudden makeover to an obedient wife is unbelievable to many. We can see that fire is still raging within her. But she doesn't want to burn the mask of her husband's large-heartedness. It is not the case of Nomita alone. Many women are there in our society hiding their emotions for the sake of their family. That's why Ashapurna Devi compares women to matchboxes. It's a short story translated from Bengali by Prasanchit Gupta. Okay, here we wind up our third lesson. Thank you, children.